See, my God is awesome. He can move mountains and keep me in the valley and hide me from the rain. My God is awesome. He heals me when I'm broken. My strength when I've been weakened. Whatever you bring. My God, my God is awesome. He can move mountains and keep me in the fire. Hide me from the rain, hide me from the rain. My God, my God is awesome. He heals me when I'm broken. My strength where I've been weakened, whatever you pray. My God, my God is awesome, 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 is awesome. My God is awesome. Awesome. awesome, my God, my God is awesome. Yes, he is, yes, he is, he's awesome. Oh, he is awesome. Yeah, he's awesome, my God, my God is awesome. He can move mountains. Me in the valley and hide me from the rain. My God, my God is awesome. Use me when I'm broken. My strength where I've been weakened. Forever he will my God, my God is awesome. He can, he can move mountains and keep me in the valley and hide me from the rain. My God, my God is awesome. My strength is I'm broken. My strength where I've been weak. Whatever you pray, it's awesome. My God is awesome. He is, he is, he's awesome. Yeah, he is awesome. Yes, he is. He's awesome, awesome. My God is awesome. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's awesome. Yeah, awesome. He is awesome. Great are you, Lord. You are greatly to be praised. Greatly to be praised. Father, you reign. Great are you lord you are greatly to be praised greatly to be praised father you reign great great you are greatly to be greatly to be praised greatly to be praised father you praise you lord you are greatly to be praised greatly to be praised father you you are greatly to be praised. Yes, you are. You are greatly to be praised. Father, you pray. You are greatly to be praised. Greatly to be praised. Father, you pray. 
great are you, Lord? You are greatly to be praised. You are greatly to be praised. Father, you reign. Great are you, Lord. You are greatly to be praised. Greatly to be praised. Father, you reign. Great, great are you, Lord. You are greatly to be praised. Greatly to be praised. Yes, you reign. Yes, you reign. Father, you reign. You are great. Are you the Lord? You are greatly to be Greatly to be praised. Father, you reign. Great, great. Are you Lord? You are ready to be ready to be praised. Yeah. Father, you ready to be ready. Are you Lord? You are ready to be praised. You are ready to be praised. When I come into your presence, I'm so happy. When I come into your presence, I'm so glad. Because in your presence, there's anointing. Your spirit moves around me in your presence. Anointing breaks the yoke when I come. When I come into your presence, I'm so happy. Yes, I am. When I come into your presence, I'm so glad. Because in your presence, your spirit moves around me in your presence. Anointing When I come, when I come into your presence, I'm so happy. When I come into your presence, I'm so glad. In your presence, anointing your spirit moves around me. Your presence, anointing grace to your Lord. When I come, when I come into your presence, I'm so happy. Yes, I am. And when I come into your presence, I'm so glad in your presence there is nothing. Your spirit will surround me in your presence. I'm going to praise Oh, when I come into your presence, I'm so happy. When I come into your presence, I'm so glad. Because in your presence, there is anointing. As your spirit moves around me, in your presence, anointing breaks the yoke. When I come, when I come into your presence, I'm so happy. When I come into your presence, I'm so glad. Because in your presence there is nothing, and your spirit moves around me. Your presence, anointing, grace and There's nothing like. Your presence, Lord, all I want is to be with you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord, 
All I want is to worship you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to be with you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to worship you. Worship you. To worship you. Worship you. There's nothing like, there's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to be with you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to worship. There's nothing like, there's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to be with you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to worship you. Worship you. Worship you. 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 You are, you are God, and we worship you. Are, you are God, and we worship you. Are, you are God, and we worship you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. And all I want is to be with you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. And all I want is to worship you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to be with you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to worship you. You worship you. There's nothing like, there's nothing like your presence, Lord. Cause all I want is to be with you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to worship nothing like that, nothing like your presence, Lord. And all I want is to be with you, that nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to worship you. You to worship Worship you. You are you are God. And we worship you are you are God. And we worship you are you are God. And we worship. You are, you are God, and we worship you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to be with you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to worship you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to be with you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to worship you. Worship you. To worship you. For oh, you, yes.
Jesus, we are here in his presence. And in his presence, there is joy forevermore. It's an anointing in his presence to break every yoke. So this is the time for us to thank God because we are in his presence this morning. Some people desire to be here, but they are not here, not because they wouldn't want to be here, but some circumstances beyond their control. They want to thank God because you are here. Thank him. Some people were here yesterday, and today they are no more. And you are here. Guess what? The right place to be is in his presence, and that is where you are now. So we want to thank God for giving you the grace to be in his presence. You want to thank God for giving you the ability to be here. We want to thank God because in his presence there is joy forevermore. Thank God. Let's forget about the things that are happening somewhere else. Put our minds here as we give him the praise this morning. We want to thank him. We want to bless his name. We want to exalt him. We want to worship him. Right now we want to pray and thank God because of the great things he's been doing in our midst. Let's thank him because he brought you into a new year. Let's thank him because he didn't just bring you here. He brought you here in good health. Let's thank God because of his security over your life. Let's thank him. No matter what the devil is doing out there, your life is secured. Your family is secured. The Lord has secured. You have secured. Your position has secured everything that has to do about you, with you. Let's lift up a praise this morning to the Lord because of our mission field in the Philippines. Let's thank him for the point man in the forefront of the battle, our region overseer. Let's pray for him that all the visions that God has given him, all the strategies for the new year in that land, just like Isaac sowed and the Lord gave him results in hundredfold, that the Lord will give him results in hundredfold in the land of the Philippines. You also want to pray for yourself and all the visions you'll be casting this year, that the Lord will help you, that you will have results in hundredfold, like Isaac sold, and he had results in hundredfold. This is a year, the year of action, the year of activity, the year of moving forward, the year of taking action. As you take action, as you take charge, as you launch out this year, just like Isaac, the Lord will give you a result, hundredfold. Let's pray for our sister. A sister here will be traveling tomorrow for an important mission in Africa. Let's pray as he travels to Africa, she will come back in peace. We will not hear any bad news. That the Lord will guide her she will get on an airplane, not a flying coffin, that will take her home and bring her back in one piece. That all the arrows of the enemy waiting for her arrival, the Lord will bend every one of them. That she will travel in peace. She will not come back in pieces. In Jesus' name, we pray. Father, Lord, we thank you for this beautiful Sunday morning. We are grateful unto you, Lord, because you have given us life. Because of the good health, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Father, because of how you've secured us, secured our families. Lord, we thank you because all the plans of the enemy, you didn't allow any of them to come to pass in our lives. Lord, as we come here today to worship you, we pray, Lord, that our worship will be acceptable unto you. And all the prayers we've offered unto you this morning, we ask that you answer us by fire. Thank you, Lord, for answering us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Happy New Year, everybody. Amen. This is going to be a great year for every one of us because it's a new dawn. Amen. It's a new year. It's a new era. It's a year of new blessings, new commitments, new visions, new anointing. 
and everything new in our lives in Jesus' name. We want to use this opportunity to welcome those that are worshiping with us for the first time. I don't know if we have anybody new person here, in person or online, in Zoom. We want to bring a warm greetings to you this morning. If you are here, you can please raise your hands so we can bring a warm greetings to you this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord will help us this year so that we'll be able to do more for the master and all our expectations will not be cut short in Jesus' name. I want to quickly check recorded announcements then and to come back to do some errands. Thank you. Welcome to Deeper Life Bible Church, Washington, D.C. Whether you're a first-time guest or returning worshiper, we welcome you in the name of the Lord. We are so excited to share what the Lord is doing in this living church. So listen closely and make it a commitment to be a part of our weekly fellowship. This is our Sunday worship service. Every Sunday, we begin with our pre-service prayers at 8.30 a.m. and our service starting at 9 a.m. Later on Sunday evenings at 6 p.m., we meet in smaller units at our house caring fellowship. Make sure you meet with one of our ushers or leaders to get you connected to a smaller fellowship unit. Here, we believe in the power of the word and the authority we get by studying it. Join us every Monday at 6.20 p.m. as we join our pastor and founder of the church, Pastor Dr. W.F. Kamui, as he leads us through the Bible study. If you're a senior citizen, we invite you to join us on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. for an evening with Jesus. We hope to see you this Wednesday. All children are invited to join our kids' Bible discussion every Thursday at 6 p.m. This is a fun time to learn all about Jesus. You've got to be there. All the youth in the building, join us on Thursdays at 8 p.m. for a time of building up ourselves in the knowledge of the Word of God. You do not want to miss this time of fellowship. Invite a friend. Join us on Fridays at 6.20 p.m. for our Friday revival service. This is a time to have our strength renewed and vision repaired. This is a powerful time to be in the presence of God. See you there. Jesus commanded us, men are always to pray and not to faint. This is why we meet every Monday through Friday from 9 to 10 p.m. and every Saturday and Sunday from 8 to 9 p.m. Be a part of us as we intercede for ourselves and our nation. Offering time, blessing time. Blessing time, offering time. Malachi chapter 3 verse 9 tells us, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, and the Lord promises to pour out a blessing, that there shall not be enough room to receive it. If you have brought your tithes and offerings, please bring them out now. Praise the Lord. We want to give our tithes and offering. It's a new year. And pray that the Lord will help us as we make commitments, financial commitments, just like we saw Isaac there, he sowed, and the Lord multiplied his sowing into a hundredfold in Jesus' name. So this year we are challenging us to be like up and doing in our giving. Usually our tithes are very, very important if we want to benefit marginally from the giving. I mean, from the blessing of giving. Um, I know we have so many teachings out there flying all over the place. Some say, oh, tithe is done, is the tithe for Israelite, is for, I mean, the olden days and all that. Tithe and offering is still in vogue and is still the thing, the needful thing that we need to do. As a believer, if you are not paying your tithe, you are not being faithful. And uh, that is not what God wants for you. So when you make your money, you make $2,000 in a month, your tithe is $200. 
make 4,000 your tithes is $400. And from what the Bible tells us, it is compulsory that we do it. So before we take our tithes and offering, let's read again the book of Malachi. Before, as we do so, I want you to get ready to bring out your tithes and offerings from your pockets, from your purses, and um, not just pockets and purses. Today we do zeal. We have the zeal details on the uh, screen there. You can zeal uh, your offerings as we do so. The Lord will bless us mightily in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. It's like the hallelujah is going down. Maybe we're talking about money. Praise the Lord. Amen. I know we are well able. Amen. Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, and there may be meats in mine house. And prove me now herewith, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Righteous Father, we thank you, Lord, for giving us this opportunity to be kingdom investors. And Lord, we pray that as we give this morning in obedience to the scriptures, that Lord, you will bless us and your blessings, Heavenly Father, in this church will reach out and overflow to the souls around us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know that this year you have prepared great things that you want to do in our lives. As we key into this covenant, Father, we pray that all the visions and all the aspirations and projects and the set goals that we we'll have for this year, Lord, we invite you into them, and we pray that you help us as you set your hands on the seal to help us to be able to achieve these great things. We pray for good health. We pray for strength. We pray, oh God, that you keep our mental minds in a good saddle so that we will be at our last and in the fullness of our minds to do great things for you this year. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. So as we give, we want to... Yeah, before, sorry, I know we have some announcements from some of our leaders. The rule is if we want our, an announcement to be made, we have to get it three days before Sunday. So there are other announcements. Maybe the leaders can reach out to the people directly, but we may not be able to take it because we came in this morning. So if you have any announcements um, you want us to project here, we have to get it three days before the time. Our Bible reading will be taken from Hebrews chapter 5 and chapter 6. After the offering, we'll go to other additional announcements, then Bible reading. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus forever and ever in Jesus' name. I want to take the following additional announcement that after service today, all workers and um, volunteer workforce are to wait to see the pastor after service. This year is going to be a great year. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, as we see in the book of Acts of the Apostles, there was no dull moment there for the apostles, the followers of Jesus Christ. And we see the name, uh, the Acts of the Holy Ghost through the apostles. So this month we're going to begin is going to be great. And that great beginning is going to start from this month. So this month we'll be having a January outreach, which is going to start on Sunday, January 14th. To Thursday, January 18, 20, 
24, the details of this activity will be passed to us later on. On Friday, January 19, 2024, by 6.30 p.m., we'll be having a community fellowship. And we want to encourage us to be prepared because when we come, we're going to transition to the mode of a vigil. And this vigil will be starting soon after the community fellowship on that same uh, night of fe Friday, January 19, 2024. So come, be prepared, because God is going to do some great things in our midst that night. I had only amen from the choir side. What happened to others? Amen. Uh, we don't want to come for the vigil. We have to come. Men ought always to pray and not to do what? And not to faint, not to get tired, not to get discouraged. And more especially, you see, like the announcement was talking to us about the daily prayer line. You know, a region overseer, through the wisdom God has given him, you know, is a master strategist. Look at the whole situation. Said that, you know what? Now we have to look for other ways to make these things happen. So the daily prayer line is no longer in effect. I know somebody texted trying to connect and the line wasn't going through. No, that prayer line ended with 2023. So this year we are having a new approach, a new method to contend with the enemy. So one of it is this vigil. And we encourage us strongly to make ourselves available every Friday night, not every night now, any Friday night that we'll be having it. We encourage us to be here for the community fellowship and from there we'll transition to the vigil. And as we do so, the Lord will use us mightily to the glory of his name in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Brothers, praise the Lord. No, I didn't say sisters. I mean brothers only. Brothers, praise the Lord. Yeah, I wanted to see, yes, I had the, the vibration there. I wanted to be sure. Is it only sisters here that are shaking the whole place? Now I know the brothers are also here. Praise the Lord. Amen. Like we said the other time, this month is going to be a great month. And it's going to start with the brothers. Um, you know, the way God structured, forget about all those uh, feminist uh, uh, activists. They don't know the scriptures. The way God structured it, we didn't put it that way. That's the way God put it. Man is supposed to be what? Men are supposed to be what? The head. I think sisters are the ones saying it now, not me. So they, they are in tune. They are in agreement with me. Amen. That is the way God made it. I don't care what anybody is saying out there with all their activism and so on that has never helped anybody. The Bible will have to stand where the Bible stood. Stop where he stopped, where he stopped and don't go beyond that. So because of that, the brothers in this church need to come alive. Amen. The brothers in this church need to come alive. Amen. We have to be in the front. That's the way it's structured. Remember uh, when Esau, sorry, Jacob wanted to meet his brother Esau. Did he put the wife first and say, woman, be there so that when they take you down, I will better go back and marry another woman. Is that the way he did it? No. He put them, separated them, and he was there in the forefront. So the brothers have to be in the forefront. Amen. Now, there is a very important event, powerful event, awesome event, wonderful event, unprecedented event that is going to come on January 21, 2024. A round of applause to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And that will be by 6.30. And guess what? It's going to be somewhere they call Olive Garden. The brothers are going to go for an outing that very day. Hallelujah. I need a round of applause. Yes. And you know what? Not just the brothers here. I know there are some sisters here that their husbands don't come with us. We want to invite your husband also. We want to see how we can fellowship with all the men. So if you are here and your husband is not coming with you, no problem. You can let us, you know, have his number so we'll see how to reach out to him. That day is going to be a great day. All the brothers in the house, we don't want anybody missing. I know not all the brothers are here right now, but maybe some of them might be watching on YouTube or Zoom. Bro, if you're watching me on Zoom or YouTube, we need you here on January 21st, 
2024 because we'll be heading out to Olive Garden. Um, the sister, sorry, your time is coming. Amen. Praise the Lord. But we have to go for us, even though they say ladies first. But you guys have been having hiking and all those things before us. So you've done your own now. So let's also take our turn. Amen. Praise the Lord. So now we want to be taking our Bible reading, Hebrews chapters 5 and 6. Thank you. Hebrews 5. For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins, who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way, for that he himself also is compassed with infirmity. And by reason hereof he ought, as for the people, so also for himself, to offer for sins. And no man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron. So also Christ glorified not himself to be made an high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. As he saith also in another place, Thou art a priest for ever, after the order of Melchizedek, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death, and was heard in that he feared, though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him, called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. For when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat." For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Hebrews 6. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms and of laying on of hands and of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. And this will we do if God permit. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh, and put him to an open shame. For the earth, which drinketh in the rain, that cometh oft upon it, and bringeth forth herbs meet for them by whom it is dressed, receiveth blessing from God. But that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected, and is nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burned. But, beloved, we are persuaded better things of you, and things that accompany salvation, though we thus speak. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have shown toward his name, in that ye have ministered to the saints, and do minister. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end, that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. And so, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. Wherein God, willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath, that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation, who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure 
and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil, whither the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus, made an high priest for ever, after the order of Melchizedek. Father, we pray that the Spirit behind the word will come alive in every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. You know the devil's a liar. 
There's nothing what can do. Or they try not to stop us. We know you will see us through, Lord Jesus. We're depending on you, Jesus. 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 We're depending on you, Jesus. 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 Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. Uh, this is the first Sunday of the year. Uh, the way I'm speaking like it was last year. This is new. Can you rise up, rise up, please? We need to be so excited as the Lord is excited that you have come to church on the first Sunday of the year. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. This day, just before we get the... How many of you, you have been vaccinated before? You have been vaccinated before? Do you need another vaccination? There is one today. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The Lord will give us an injection for the beginning of the year. All the challenges sorted out for the year in Jesus' name. You will not be sick this year. The Lord will keep you healthy in Jesus' name. Uh, before we get the injection, I just want to make it clear uh, so that you're not afraid. No, no, my children want to fear injection, but it will be no pain, uh, very smooth, wonderful uh, doctor is going to give us injection. Praise the Lord. We have uh, today a special message coming from our senior pastor. He's a global pastor of the Deeper Life Bible Church worldwide. Praise the Lord. As he unfolds the vision before us today, you will get your injection in Jesus' name. As he prays for you, just believe that this year, sickness gone in Jesus' name. And the blessing of God overflow in Jesus' name. I want you to pray for yourself and say, God, I'm here. This first Sunday of the year, Lord, I need that blessing from God. I need that touch from God. As a man servant comes to minister to us today, I will catch my own blessing. And this year, there will be blessing in my life. Let's talk to God in prayer. Pray for yourself and say, God, we are here today. 
This is the day to get the blessing of God from the man of God as he ministers to us this day. Let's talk to God in prayer. Just prepare yourself. For service of the year. I welcome everyone in Jesus' name. New year, new blessing. New year, new life. New strength. New power. A new progress in every life in Jesus' name. Our children, I welcome you to the new year. Young people, youths, I welcome you to this new year. And young adults and young professionals, you are welcome to the new year in Jesus' name. Now, adults like me. I said adults like me, fathers, mothers, pastors, ministers, families, I welcome you in Jesus' name. <clears throat> this will be a new year for everyone, for me for you and for everyone in Jesus' name. For all our churches everywhere, every region, every state, every nation in the continent and beyond the continent of Africa, I welcome everyone to a brand new year in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this hour. We thank you for this time. We know that this year, according to your promise, according to our faith, will be really new and fresh for everyone in Jesus' name. All the promises that have missed us in the past, this is a year of achievement. The year of possession and the year of fulfillment in every life in Jesus' name. You have started with us already from the very first of the month and the first of this year. Lord, we pray you will continue with every one of us in Jesus' name. In front, at the back, around, above, beneath, you will always be present and powerful for every life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. Bless your people today and help us to remain in the blessing of the Lord. For the rest of the year, even beyond this year, Jesus tarries in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. God bless you. We're coming to Numbers chapter 8, and I'm reading from verse 14. And they found Numbers chapter 8, verse 14. Today, we're looking at uh, the Levites. And we're looking at the Christians, the believers, the Christ-like Levites of today. Those days in Israel, they are the Levites. Those days in Israel, they are the people that were committed, consecrated, set apart, and separated, severed from the world, totally consecrated unto the Lord. But now, the Levites are gone not only that, we are not, uh, you know, the nation of Israel. We are the body of Christ. We are the Christians. We are the congregation of the Lord, the people that remain committed to the Lord and co converted to the Lord and consecrated to the Lord want to learn what the Bible has to say for every one of us that have been called to the Lord and that are cleaving unto the Lord. We're looking at the sure, sealed covenant for present day Christ-like Levites. Levites, yes, separated, yes, giving to the Lord, yes, but we're sealed with a covenant as present day Christian, committed, consecrated, Christ-like Levites. And in Numbers chapter 8, reading from verse 14, thus shalt thou separate the Levites from among the children of Israel, and the Levite shall be mine. The Lord took the Levites unto himself, and he said, The Levite shall be mine day and night, week and month, all the years they were consecrated, separated as Levites. The Levite shall be mine. Watch an example, watch a model, watch a pattern for the believers, those who are called to repentance and were repented. Were called 
called by the Redeemer, who have been redeemed, we are called out of sin unto salvation, and we have been saved. And when he calls us like that, and we respond to the call, he separates us from the world, he separates us from sin, he separates us from evil, and we are totally committed unto the Lord, thou shalt separate the Levites from among the children of Israel, and the Levi shall be mine. Look at verse 15. In verse 15, after that, shall the Levites go in, after they are separated to the Lord, after they are totally given to the Lord, severed from the world, separated from the world, and separated from their sin. It's after that separation, after that salvation, that now they go in to do the service of the Lord, of the tabernacle of the congregation and thou shalt place them they could not serve the lord and none of us can serve the lord in defilement in sin in evil we have to be cleansed by the lord washed and cleansed by the blood of the lamb it says they shall cleanse them and offer them the people offer them to god because they are an offering unto the lord as we look at the levites and we look at ourselves in this new year and we look at the fact that we're separated from the world and separated from sin and separated unto the lord converted and cleansed and consecrated unto the lord we need to learn how do i give myself to the lord this year completely totally without reservation it tells us in nehemiah chapter 9 i'm reading from verse 38 nehemiah chapter 9 we're looking at verse 38 it says and because of all these we make a sure covenant and write each and our princes and the levites and the priests seal unto it the levites and the priests the seal unto the covenant the covenant of separation from the world unto the lord a covenant of total complete or reserved separation from everything defiling and we're separated unto the lord it's a covenant and for those of us who are present today christ-like levites that's what we need to take care of to understand that we're sealed and we're separated totally unto the lord in nehemiah chapter 13 i'm reading here from verse 29 it says remember them oh my god because they have defiled the priesthood and the covenant of the priesthood and of the levites here nehemiah was telling the lord that you know that the levites that should be pure and preserved permitted and consecrated unto the lord they defiled the covenant of the priesthood they defiled the covenant of the levites then he says in verse 30 in verse 30 he says thus cleansed i them to be useful to the lord again and to be profitable in the kingdom of god again although they were defiled he has said i cleanse them we need cleansing we need total washing by the blood of the lamb and we need cleansing that will make us fit and make us acceptable in the sight of the lord as we present ourselves at the present day christ-like levi's in covenant for the lord look at verse 30 it says thus i cleanse them from all strangers and appointed the words of the priest and of the Levites, everyone in his business. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, we're reading from verse 19. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19, nevertheless, the foundation of God's foundation have been this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Here is the seal. Here is the sh a surety. Here is the very certainty and the confirmation that were Levites unto the Lord, Christ like Levites unto the Lord, committed to the Lord, giving to the Lord, totally abandoned unto the Lord, absolutely surrendered unto the Lord. He says, This is the seal that the Lord knows them that are his, and let everyone, everyone, let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Verse 21. In verse 21, he says, If a man therefore purge himself from this it shall be a vessel unto honor sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work we're talking about the sure sealed 
covenant. We're present day Christ-like Levites. And there are three things we're looking at in the message today. Number one is the covenant with consecrated Levites and converted Christians. Number two, the cleansing of committed Levites and crucified Christians. Number three, our consistency with Christ-like loyalty and commendable cooperation. Look at number one. Number one is the covenant with consecrated Levites and converted Christians. The, the covenant we have is like the covenant of those Levites. The covenant the Lord has brought us to already, if we're Christians, if we're converted, if we're children of God, is a covenant also like those Levites that came out voluntarily by themselves and by decision, a decisive act that they came to the Lord. In the same way, we're taking that decisive act and we have come to the Lord and we want to remain like that, converted unto the Lord. In Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 38, and because of all this, we make a sure covenant. As you come to the Lord, you understand, you make a covenant. Covenant, a covenant that you abide in, a covenant you are assured of, a covenant that you commit yourself to, and it's not coming in and going out, coming in and going out. It's like, you know, the marriage covenant that he is the bridegroom and we are the bride. And a day comes in our lives when we totally, completely, instantaneously dedicate ourselves unto the Lord in covenant and we say, I belong to him and to him alone. I'm not you know, coming out and going in and going out, we are totally committed unto the Lord. And this is the covenant he wants us to understand. It's a sure covenant and we write it and our princes and the Levites and the priests seal unto it. And we are dividing this on three subtitles. Look at number one is the call of the Levites out of the congregation. Number two is the consecration of Levites against corruption contamination. And number three the conservation of the Levites in constant conviction. Constant conviction. Always carrying it out. I belong to the Lord. I'm separated unto the Lord. The constant conviction I'm not like them, I'm not like the world, but I belong specially unto the Lord, spiritually unto the Lord. The conservation of the Levites in constant conviction. Look at number one. Number one, the calling of Levites out of the congregation. In Exodus chapter 32, in Exodus chapter 32, something had happened. Moses had been called by the Lord to come to the mountain to receive the law of God for the children of Israel and for the for humanity because all those commandments they're repeated in uh, the New Testament in the New Covenant it is for everyone and while Moses was up there in the presence of the Lord the children of Israel their leaders came to Aaron and he said up oh, because God that will go before us but as for this Moses, we don't know well, what not we know not what has become of him and Aaron is backsliding heart, backsliding attitude, backsliding disposition. It is backsliding weakness. He said, break up the earrings that you have. And he made a God for them. And they started worshiping the idol. And uh, they said, these be thy God, so Israel, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. And God saw it. And God was grieved. And God was unhappy with them. And he told Moses, go down to your people, because they have deviated, they have gone away far from me. And I will destroy them and make you a great nation. And Moses began to pray for them, saying, oh Lord, don't do that. The Egyptians and the Gentiles were thinking, you don't have the power to take them to the land. That's why you destroy them. And God had answered the prayer. And uh, Moses came down and said, look at what you have done. He needed to call the whole nation back to the Lord. That's why we read now in Exodus chapter 32, verse 25. And when Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies. Verse 26. In verse 26, then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. This was the call that brought the Levites out 
of the congregation of sinners, the congregation of backsliders, the congregation of idol worshippers, the congregation of evil doers. Moses, like an evangelist, Moses is the man of God. He called on the people. He said, the choice is yours now. You've gone away from the Lord and you have uh, backslidden and gone into sin. But whosoever will may still come. Is that not what the evangelist tells us? Whosoever will may come and take the water of life freely. Whosoever will may come to Christ, our Savior, our Lord. Moses said, who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him that's what the lord wants us to do if you have not done that a time comes in your life a day comes in your life when you respond to the call of the lord who is on the lord's side is not willing that any issue perish he wants all to come to repentance and when you say i know what the lord wants he wants conversion he wants salvation he wants repentance for me for everyone and then you make up your mind and you come out of sin and you say i'll be on the lord's side i come and when you come like that he will receive you I said they will receive you. If you have not come, you must know. The Levites knew the day. They knew the hour. They knew the time. They came to the Lord. And it was an instantaneous change. Instantaneous separation from sin. Instantaneous surrender unto the Lord. Can you tell the hour? Can you tell the day? I can. I can. I can tell you the day and the time. And I can tell you the decision I made. And I came to the Lord. You must be able to do that. Like the Levites, you are not born into Christianity. You are not born into salvation. It takes a decisive moment, a decision of your mind that to say, I come, I repent, I turn, and I give my heart unto the Lord. If you have not done that yet, this is the good day and the best day you can do that, starting the year with the Lord. And it says the Levi, the sons of Levi, gathered themselves together unto him. Then in verse 29, verse 29, for Moses had said, consecrate yourselves today to the Lord even every man upon his son and upon his brother that he may bestow upon you a blessing this day when you give your life to the lord you consecrate yourself to the lord you say i come to the lord i'll never go back i've come to the lord and i will follow the lord for the rest of my life that's what Peter did. That's what John did. He said, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they came out, and they came unto him, and they believed him. That's what Andrew did, and that is what James did. Everyone, they came out, and they came in. They came into the kingdom of God by repentance and following after the Lord. And when you do that, you have a commitment that forever and ever, you're going to keep on following the Lord. You consecrate yourself. You lay everything in on the altar for the Lord. Your life, your past, your present, your future, everything you lay on the altar and forever you are committed to following after the Lord and it says then there are the blessings that will come upon your life. Here is something very important. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 17 and I'm reading from verse 18. In Deuteronomy chapter 17, reading from verse 18, and it shall be when he that is the king that they will appoint over them when he seated upon the throne of his kingdom that he shall write him a copy of this law in a book out of that which is before the priests, the Levites. The Levites actually kept the word, the law of God written in the book of the law. And they kept that, and if the king was to reign over Israel, he'll go to the Levites, he'll get a copy of the book of the law, and write out for himself. The first day, the Levites were custodians of the law of God, of the word of God, and which you today we are the possessors of the word of God, the proclaimers of the word of God, and we do not allow any judge, any teacher to fall down from the word of God. A Christ-like Levite 
will have the word of God, possess the word of God, proclaim the word of God, and live by the word of God, practice the word of God. The calling of the Levites out of the congregation. Look at number two here. Number two here is the consecration of Levites against corruption. The consecration of Levites against contamination. And remember, there are examples for us that as we are called to repentance, we had corruption in the past, contamination in the past, defilement in the past, sin, iniquity in the past, since we came out. And we said we disagree with all the corruption of the land, the corruption in the office, the corruption in the community, the corruption in the nation, the corruption anywhere and everywhere. We single out ourselves and we say that our consecration commitment makes us to be opposed to the corruption in the land. And we will not do any of the corrupting things that we do anywhere in the land. And of course, we'll not carry the corruption and the contamination into our own Christian homes into the church of the living God will remain converted and clean and consecrated to the Lord. That's how the Levites were supposed to do it. And that is how we too were supposed to live the life. In Exodus chapter 32, I'm reading here from verse 7. Exodus chapter 32, verse 7. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go, get thee down for thy people, which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt, hath corrupted themselves, the people in general. They have corrupted themselves. That's why Moses called out the people and said, who is on the Lord's side? If you're on the Lord's side, you'll come out of corruption. If you're on the Lord's side, you'll consecrate yourself against the corruption of the land. If you are on the Lord's side, corruption will not have any part in your life at all. He said, the people that were brought out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, it says, and they have turned aside quickly out of the way, which I commanded them. They have made them in molten calva, and they have worshipped it, and, have, uh, and they have sacrificed thereunto, and said, these be thy God, so Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Uh, that's why, look at verse 26 again. Uh, that's why Moses stood in the gate of the camp. He will not go into their midst. He will not join himself unto them. This is the man that had been with God. The presence of God was with him. The power of God was with him. And purity, purity like no other person in Israel, in Israel was pure. That purity of the Lord, he was conscious of that inside and outside, inwardly and, uh, and outwardly. He was conscious of that purity. Purity, the purity that had no stain, the purity that had no spot, the purity that was pure through and through, and it will not go into the midst of the, of the corrupted children of Israel. And now he stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And, and that's what we do when the Lord has purified you and purged you. They can come unto you, but you don't go unto them. They can come to be like you, you don't go in to be like them. You don't join them. You don't act like them. You don't behave like them. If you have been saved, if you have been converted, if you have come out among them, you are separate and you are not going to go in unto them again. But they can come to you when they repent. They can come to you when they are saved. When their lives are turned around and changed, they come unto you. And then we're told that the sons of Levi gather themselves together unto him the lord does not want us to join the corruption of the people or the corruption of the land in fact it tells us in second corinthians chapter 11 verse 3 in second corinthians chapter 11 reading from verse 3 but i fear lest by any means that the serpent the serpent uh, beguiled deceived eve through the through his subtlety so your minds should be corrupted. So your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. When corruption comes, it comes in the mind first. Then it comes in the spirit. It comes in the soul. Corruption comes and influences 
people internally and then the corruption will appear in their language out of the abundance of their heart out of the corruption of their heart the mouth speaketh, and the corruption will show in their appearance will show in their dressing they are half dressing as we want to corrupt other people and lure other people into sin and into evil but it starts in the mind and it says if we're children of god we are converted we're born again we're separated from all those levites and then we do not allow corruption to enter into our mind who brings the corruption in the mind look at verse 13 in verse 13 it says for such a false apostles deceitful workers transforming themselves into the apostles of christ in verse 14 it says and no marvel for satan himself is transformed into an angel of light verse 15 verse 15 says therefore it is no great thing if his ministers he calls them they call themselves apostles in verse 13 but here the spirit of god through paul the apostles is they're the ministers of satan anyone that corrupts the minds of other people anyone that corrupts the lives of other people anyone that corrupts uh, you know the standing of other people they may say they are ministers they may say they are apostles they are the ministers of satan it says and also be transformed to the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works number one is the calling is the conversion number two is the consecration number three now number three is the conservation of Levites in constant conviction. There are people that change their convictions from year to year. There are people that change their convictions from place to place. When they are in the wilderness, uh, there's a way they have conviction. When they get to the other side of the wilderness, there's a way they, they, when they roam, there's a way they act. When they are in another place, there's another way that they act. But you know, a Levite is a Levite. Anywhere, anytime, any year, every year. A Levite is a Levite in the sight of the Lord by the calling of the Lord in any city, in any country, anywhere you find yourself, anywhere you travel to, you carry your conviction along. If you're a real river, Levite, if you have been saved and born again, if you are committed and yielded to the Lord, anywhere you find yourself, you carry your conviction everywhere. When you're with your family, believing family conviction. When you're with an unbelieving family conviction. When you're going through rough roads, conviction. When you're going through smooth path, conviction. When you're traveling overseas conviction when you stay in our country here conviction anywhere you find yourself if you're a christian levite a christ-like levite and you're converted and yielded to the lord you retain that same constant conviction everywhere you go the conservation of levites in constant conviction and we're told in uh, first chronicles chapter 29 in first chronicles chapter 29 i'm reading here from verse Five. Look at verse 5. It says, and that's the gold for the things of gold, and the silver for the things of silver, and of all manner of work to be made by the hands of artificers. And who then is willing, who then is willing to consecrate a service this day? unto the Lord. You see, when you come to the Lord, and you give yourself to the Lord, and you lay everything on the altar, and you bind that sacrifice with God on the horns of the altar, as years roll in and roll out, you keep that commitment, consecration, you keep that on the altar of the Lord. That's what the Levites were, were expected to do as they went through the wilderness, all the all the commitment they had, and they will not come, they will not compare themselves to the people of the land. They said, I came. I, I uh, submitted myself, I surrendered myself, and I consecrated myself to the Lord. And they moved on, and they had to ship the tabernacle, and they had to move from place to place. And when they got to the land of promise, their consecration continued, their conviction continued. And some of them, because you know, they were to be Levites from the age of 20 to the age of 50. Some of them Levites before they got married. After they got married, they kept that same calling, that same conviction. The same thing with us. Do you have any conviction? Have you any decision? 
Have you any commitment to the word of God? Have you responded to the call of God? And you say, this is how I will live. And this is what I commit my life to. And this word and this doctrine is what I believe. And I live by that. If you are converted before you got married, you consecrated before you got married, you had conviction before you got married, after the marriage, the conviction goes on. You maintain the same conviction before you had children, you had conviction. After that, after having children, you remain in that same conviction before you became full-time worker in the vineyard of the Lord. You had conviction after becoming a full-time worker, a full-time minister, you remain in that conviction to serve the lord in righteousness and holiness transparently in the in the private in the public all the days of your life you see the people that are real levites of the lord and real followers of the lord that the people that have conviction and they keep that conviction in persecution in peace and any time they have that constant conviction unto the lord and, and uh, you know look at uh, look at um psalm 118 and i'm reading here now from verse 27 psalm 118 verse 27 god is the lord which has showed us light by the sacrifice was caught even unto the hands of the altar. Pinch the sacrifice unto the hands of the altar. It's like Abraham when he sacrificed those uh, uh, birds to the Lord, and then other birds of prey wanted to come and take the sacrifice. He drew them away. Make sure you're watching over your life. You're watching over your consecration. You're watching over your conviction. And you say, when I came to the Lord five years ago, ten years ago, twenty years ago, fifty years ago, when I came to the Lord. Here is like a Christ-like Levite, the commitment I made and the conviction I had, and I put that on the altar of the Lord, absolutely surrendered unto the Lord. Nothing taken away after 50 or 60 years of following the Lord. Those are the real Christ-like Levites. And you want to make sure that you reaffirm the consecration today, and you, uh, you give over again the conviction again today, like Daniel, wherever you go, you go to Bible on you go anywhere you say here is this i will not defile myself what i wasn't eating back in judah i will not eat in babylon what i wasn't doing in judah i will not do it in babylon and what i wasn't getting involved with all the shady practices and you know the shady kind of life i wasn't doing that in judah i'll not do it in babylon you keep your conviction you keep your consecration you keep your absolute surrender completely constant and consistent and the lord will bless you in jesus name Amen. We're looking at point number two now. Point number two. We're looking at the cleansing of committed Levites. You see, Levites were not people that did wishy washy service. Levites were not people that are up and down, up and down, undependable, unstable, unreliable. No, they were committed Levites and crucified Christians and crucified Christians. Nehemiah chapter 13, we're reading from verse 29. Nehemiah chapter 13, looking at verse 29, remember them, oh my God, because they have defiled the priesthood, the covenant of the priesthood and of the Levites. Look at verse 30. In verse 30, those cleansed I them from all strangers and appointed the words of the priests and the Levites, everyone in his business in Galatians chapter 2. Reading from verse 20, Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, the crucified Christians. Those, those are the real Levites in the kingdom of God today. And those are the Christ-like Levites that follow the Lord every step of the way. In Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, I am crucified with Christ. I am crucified with Christ. From the moment Paul the apostle came to the Lord and he responded to the call of God, he became crucified with Christ. And not only at that beginning, continually, every moment of his life, continually, all the days of me, continually, until he breathes his last breath, I am crucified with Christ. A real child of God, a real Levite, in covenant relationship with the Lord, will say 
the same thing. The flesh is always crucified. And all the parts of, or the different parts of his life is always crucified. And he lives a crucified life. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth, present tense, Leave it continually, leave it in me. That is the committed liver. That is the crucified Christian. Christ leave it in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God consistently, not spasmodically, and it's not occasionally, consistently. I live by the face of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. This point number two is the cleansing of committed Levites cruc and crucified Christians. Three things we're looking at. Look at number one here, genuine conversion and cleansing of the inner life. When we say we're Levites unto the Lord, we're converted by the Lord, we're, we're yielded to the Lord, it starts from the inner life. It doesn't start from the outside, it starts from the inside. Number two, generative commitment and cleaving to the invisible Lord. Generative, generating a righteous life, generating inspiration, and inspiring others that you will be like God has made of generative commitment and cleaving to the invisible Lord. Number three is the generous contribution of our time, of our resources, of our lives. We're totally giving to the Lord and we don't grudge the Lord anytime. In anything we have to give, we're generous as we contribute to the progress of the kingdom of God. We're generous as we contribute to the expansion of the kingdom of God. We're generous as we contribute our treasures and the things that are very important, essential to us. We contribute everything to the work of the Lord. Generous contribution and and cleaning with increasing love. We're coming to number one. Number one is genuine compassion and cleansing of the inner life. Look at Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter 23. I'm reading from verse 26. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and the platter that the outside of them may be clean. Also. Yes, he wants out outward cleanliness, but he begins with the inward life, the inner life. And he said the Pharisees were hypocrites because they were good and correct outwardly. But in one day, they were not so good. And the same thing he says about us. If we're following the Lord, and if we're real Levites unto the Lord, he wants us to cleanse that which is on the inside. Our thoughts, our mind, our disposition, our inner life. He wants that washed and cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Look at verse 27. In verse 27, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Hypocrites. God hates hypocrisy. Christ hates hypocrisy. And if anybody is in the kingdom of God and his life is based on hypocritical acts, he acts the way a Christian, a believer, ought to act, but inwardly is not a real Christian, trustworthy, transparent, honest. Christ hates that. And instead of bringing blessing to such people, it says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward. When you look at some Christians, all they have to show is what they have on the outside. It's what they put on in the clothing. They wear the badge of identification with the people of the kingdom. It's only something outward. But the Lord wants us to go beyond the beautiful exterior. But are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Verse 28. In verse 28, even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men. But within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. This new year, 
change will come. We're beautiful on the inside, in our thoughts, in our mind, in our attitude, in our conduct, character, on the inside. Everything cleansed and washed by the blood of the Lamb. And you're not doing anything superficially, anything hypocritically. What you are on the inside, the holiness that starts on the inside, the purity that starts on the inside, and the genuineness that starts on the inside, you're carried out outwardly in Jesus' name. A well-dressed soul, a well-dressed heart, a well-dressed spirit. After that, a well-dressed body outside. It tells us in First John chapter one. It tells us in verse five. In First John chapter.